I feel like a lot of times on this diet that we're all on, we don't get enough micronutrients and no one really talks about that. Everyone talks about macronutrients, macronutrients, macronutrients. What about the micronutrients? What about the fiber that we can get from actual real vegetables and real food? Now, granted, this isn't a meal, right? These are just sides that you would eat next to a protein, whether it be pork, chicken, beef, fish, whatever. But eating vegetables keeps you full. And I don't know about you, but I feel better when I eat vegetables. I feel better when I eat a diet that's filled with actual whole foods. I feel better. Maybe it's just a placebo effect. I don't know, but I just feel better. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mina, culinary school grad, former professional cook, and we're making more real food today, just regular old food. Now, these are vegetables. We're making vegetables that taste good. They're not packed with protein, but these are sides that you can eat next to your protein. So we got three vegetable dishes today and they're actually vegan, except for cheese on one of them, which you can leave out. The first one we have is a chickpea salad. We have chickpeas, olives, roasted red peppers, artichokes, some olive oil and fresh lemon juice. And then we're doing a broccoli rob, really easy garlic, crushed red pepper, olive oil, some pecorino romano. It's just a classic combination, so easy to make, but it's so delicious. And then something that I've been eating lately is spaghetti squash with dried fruits and some nuts. And it's just so good. It's good as like a sweet kind of thing. It's almost like a sweet potato, but not really with a crunchier kind of a texture. And we're also going to put some maple syrup on there. This is such a good I don't want to say dessert, but it's a sweet thing to eat. It's really, really good. Let's switch over. So the first thing to do is to cut your spaghetti squash in half. This can be kind of hard to do. You really need to give it some elbow grease to do this. And then you want to scoop out all those seeds. You could dry and roast the seeds if you want. I don't, I just throw them out. And then put it cut side down on a sheet tray and then it's going to go into the oven at 375 for about 30 to 45 minutes. It's going to depend on the size of your squash. These are the toppings that we're using for the spaghetti squash. So dried dates, mixed nuts. I don't like peanuts in here. This is just cashews, almonds, and some pistachios, and I think macadamia nuts. Some dried figs, third of a Granny Smith apple, and some maple syrup. I just want to note, please weigh your nuts. This is 170 calories, which is insane. Look how small this is. This is 170 calories. I mean, you can eat this in about, I don't know, a minute. So just weigh the nuts. They're loaded with calories. All right, so I'm just gonna chop everything up into a kind of a small-ish dice, but you can do a slice if you want. You can do big, big pieces. I just like little tiny bites that I can get with the spaghetti squash. This might seem like a tedious task, but I'm actually gonna cut each almond in half because I want them to have some kind of a shape to them. I don't want them to just be completely crushed. This should be all we need. When you check the spaghetti squash, just give it a poke and it should be soft to the touch. That's how you know it's done. If it's not, just throw it back in the oven. And when you grab a fork, it should come apart like this pretty easily. Okay, so now that it's cooled down a little bit, I can scoop it out. I'm gonna use a fork because that's gonna keep those nice long strands. Even though it's not really important, I don't really care about these long strands. I personally like them small so I can just eat it quicker and easier. But people really like those like long strands of spaghetti squash. And then pour your syrup over it and give it a really good mix. That is a lot of spaghetti squash. All right, so if you were to meal prep this, you don't want to put on the apples because they're going to get brown. So just save the apples and put them on right before you eat this. I normally like to eat this warm, so I'll warm up a little bit of the spaghetti squash. I'll put on the nuts and the fruit mixture, and then I'll put the apples on the last, last thing. 
All right, this next one is super, super easy. We're just assembling a few things together. So we're doing chickpeas, some artichoke hearts, olives, a red pepper that I'm gonna roast. So I'm gonna do this like the jalapeno in the taco video where I'm gonna char it and then I'm gonna peel it and chop it up and use it in the salad. But feel free to buy the stuff that comes in a jar. It'll even be easier. And then we need some olive oil, an old lemon that was in the back of the fridge and some parsley strain these from the can and I just gave them a quick rinse just to get some of that water off of them. All right, so while the pepper is roasting, I'm gonna just cut up all the garnishes, just the artichoke hearts and the olives and the pepper after it's done. If you haven't tried these, they are delicious. Mm. So I don't wanna get these too small. I'm just gonna cut them in half like that. And the olives are just gonna get a quick slice Notice that olive is one of those things that you either love or hate. And some people really don't like olives. I'm obviously not one of those people. It's okay if there's a little bit of char on it. You just don't want any heavy clumps of it. I don't want the seeds here, so I'm gonna Take the top off and I'm just gonna drain all this out here. Seeds should just come right out. And I'm just gonna cut them up into kind of a dice. All right, so we have all the ingredients here. We have the chickpeas, the artichoke, olives, and roasted red peppers, parsley, the chives, lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper, and a little bit of cumin. And we're just gonna mix all the stuff together. That's it. We only need a tiny bit of salt because we have the artichokes in there, we have the olives in there, so we don't need a lot of salt. I do like plenty of pepper though. About a teaspoon or less of cumin, depending on how you like it. I really like cumin as well. We're only gonna use half a lemon because again, there's a lot of acidity here. So we just wanna bring a little bit of the brightness from the lemon and that's it. And the olive oil is just gonna round out all that acidity and it's gonna balance the rest of the salad. give it a taste and make sure that the seasoning is okay. It doesn't need any more salt, maybe some more lemon. Tiny bit of salt. It also needs a little bit of acidity. All right, that should be good. Oh man, this is so good. This is a satisfying dish to eat. This is satisfying. And for the broccoli rob, we're gonna need one bunch of broccoli rob, extra virgin olive oil, crushed red peppers, five cloves of garlic, and some pecorino romano. This is optional, leave it out if you wanna keep this completely vegan. You don't have to use the cheese, it's just a little bit better. Before we chop anything up, we wanna bring up a pot of water to a boil and add salt in it like the sea. You want it to be as salty as the sea. Yes, it should be that salty because that's what's gonna season the broccoli rob. While that comes up to a boil, we can chop the garlic and get everything else ready. So we want pretty thin slices on the garlic. I have a video on this, you should go check it out. There's a couple ways for you to get nice thin garlic. You can do it with a knife, you can do it with a mandolin. You can even use a razor blade if you want. If you want to be like Pauly. Broccoli Rob, I'm gonna chop it about right here. That's where it seems like it's the most fibrous. While the water's coming up to a boil, let's saute the garlic up. All right, so this is two tablespoons of oil. There's not much else going on. It's just the vegetables and the oil, really. And you don't want high heat here. You actually want like medium to low heat because this is olive oil. You don't want it to get too hot. It's gonna smoke. It's not gonna taste good. So remember, keep it low to medium.
So just keep all the garlic in the oil and cook it really slowly. If you see that they're going a little bit too fast, just turn the heat down. Remember, slow here. We want slow. I can see that this side of the pan is hotter than here. So I'm just going to switch them around. Once the garlic starts to get a little bit translucent, I'm going to put three quarters of a teaspoon of the crushed red peppers. This is up to you how much you want of this. So when you add a spice to oil, this is called blooming and it's gonna bring out the flavors in the spices a lot more. And again, low heat. Mine is on the lowest heat right now. And then if you see that it's not doing anything, you could turn the heat up just a little bit. You don't wanna burn the oil, you don't wanna burn the garlic here. And I'm also gonna take this time to add some black pepper, freshly cracked, please. And I'm going to adjust the grinder here to give me some rough cracks. I don't want them so fine. I want them nice and rough. This is also a good reason for you to have a pepper mill on hand because you get to control the size of the pepper that you want. Okay, so the water just came up to a boil. I'm going to drop all the broccoli robin here. So this is only gonna blend for about 45 seconds or very, very quick. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna turn the heat up on the oil and get it ready for the broccoli rob. All right, so I'm just gonna take the broccoli rob straight out of the pot, give it a quick dab on a paper towel, and in it goes. And then we wanna bring all this up, give it a good mix. This shouldn't take too long, just a few minutes. Mm. Use a tiny bit of salt. I'm just gonna turn it off now. Some more pepper. start with the broccoli raw because that's the hot one it's not really hot anymore because I've been taking pictures mm. I mean it's really simple but it's really good you have the bitterness from the broccoli raw and the cheese is really good again this is nothing insane or crazy it's just some sauteed vegetables a little bit of oil but I'm just giving you ideas here for more things to eat some garlic. Mm. Oh, you definitely taste the chili flakes. And next is the chickpea salad. Got the chickpeas, the olives, roasted red peppers, marinated artichokes. You can also add garlic in here too, if you want. Maybe roasted garlic. This is solid, honestly. You got the brininess from the olives, the char from the peppers, and those artichokes are delicious. And it's so easy. I mean, you put a piece of fish, you put a piece of chicken on top of this and you have a fancy lunch. And the last one, I saved this for last because it is on the sweet side and this has been curbing my cravings lately. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. My one complaint about this is it's cold. It got way too cold while I was doing all of the thumbnail and all that stuff. What's great about this is that you have so many different textures in here. You have the spaghetti squash, which is like soft but crunchy. You got those soft dates and figs, the fresh crunchy apple, the nuts too. Oh man. Hmm. And there's so much fiber in here. This is going to keep you full for a while. Hmm. Just got a piece of fig. Very good. So like I always say, go out there, buy some vegetables, cook some vegetables. They're going to keep you full. They're good for you. And I think we should start to think a little bit more about micronutrients. Again, maybe it's just a placebo effect, but I feel better when I eat whole foods 
and I just eat protein on the side. So this is usually how I like to eat. I eat a lot of vegetables and just some either grilled chicken or some pork or some fish on the side. And that's usually how I like to eat with the occasional sweets thrown in there. But this just gives you the fattiness, you know, because you use a little bit of olive oil in there. Olive oil does keep you satisfied. Eating these healthy fats keeps you satisfied. To me, I think there's a difference between feeling full and feeling satisfied. You can be full and not feel satisfied. If I give you a big bag of lettuce, you eat that whole bag, you'll probably be full, but will you be satisfied? I don't think so. So we wanna be satisfied as well as full because if you're not satisfied by your food, you're gonna just go on a binge. At least that's what's been true for me and I have to find ways to satisfy my cravings and actually look forward to my meals. I feel like your food should make you happy. If your food doesn't make you happy, you should find different food. I feel like I've been talking for a while. All right, that's enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Go out there and eat some vegetables, please. And uh, tag me on Instagram as always. I love to see what you're coming up with. I love to see what you're gonna do. I know some of you are gonna take this and change it around and make it your own, which is awesome. Show me what you're gonna do and tag me again on Instagram. Leave a comment down below. I do have a lot of suggestions, but I keep a list of all your suggestions. If you suggested it in the comments, it's on my list. That list is like this big now. So I am working on there. There's gonna be some crazy exciting news coming. Crazy exciting news coming. So stay tuned for that. It's probably gonna go on Instagram first and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.